Welcome to Guts Tutorials and in this video I'll be covering practice problem 8.10, right? If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and if you like this video, just go ahead and give it a thumbs up. So, given the circuit of here, we are asked to find VO of T for time distance in zero. So VO is indicated over here, it's in between V1 and V2. So, a quick relationship which we can establish is that if you move from that point to that point, you have VO, which means moving from the positive side, you start from the positive side and you say V1 subtract the other side, which is the other node, is equals to VO. So V1 subtract V2 is equals to VO. So we're going to find the individual values of V1 and V2, which, which are after subtracting one from the other, we are going to find our V of T. So let's do that quickly. Before we do that, let's revise how we deal with general second order circuits, right? So the first thing to do is to find your initial conditions. So let's do that. For time less than zero, that is where we're going to find our initial conditions or part of your initial conditions. So for time less than zero, we are basically going to find our initial conditions, right? So time less than zero. This is not active because it's only active only for time greater than zero. So we have a short circuit over there. No other excitation, no stored energy, which is uh, given to us. And therefore, V1 and V2 are both zero volts. Now that we have that, we can now move to time greater than zero. Let's start with the time just after zero so that we, we can find some things quickly. Or well, let's let's just go ahead and do time greater than zero because it's basically just about the same time or the same general time. So for time greater than zero, this is actually active. Now that this is active, what we can do is we can do nodal analysis to find the derivatives of each, which are gonna help us to ultimately solve V1 and V2. And this is what I mean. At node V1, so node V1, we're basically going to start there and say V1 subtract 20 divided by 1, right? Which is the same as V1 subtract 20. Then we're going to have a half, which is C dV over dt, so dV1 t. And this is for time zero, right? Then we're going to have dv1 over dt, then we're going to have plus v1 subtract v2 divided by 1 equals to 0. All right, this is what we have. We're going to rearrange at time 0 and say dv over dt at time 0. It's going to give us, this is 0 at time 0, this is 0 at time 0, that is 0 as well. So we're going to have this going to the other side of the equal sign, which is going to tell us, so let's see, this is zero at time zero. This is zero at time zero. This is zero at time zero. And we have our um, 20 over here, right? Good. So it's 20 over there. And this is for V1, dV1, right? We have 20 over there and we have a half over here. So multiplying this half through or multiplying by two, we're going to have times two over here. And therefore, dv1 over dt at time 0 is equal to 40 volt per second. Now, moving on to node, let's come to node v2. We have v2 subtract v1 divided by 1. Then we have 1 over 3, which is this over here, which is the current which goes down there. So we have two currents associated with this node. Then we're going to have 1 over 3 dv2 over dt is equal to zero. This is for time zero, right? So time zero, that is zero, that is zero. And we only have one over three of that equated to zero, which means we can confidently say that this is equal to zero volts per second, right? So that is equal to zero volts per second. That is what we have over there. So we have two initial conditions at time zero and the derivatives of those, right? We're now going to, so we've done that. We're now going to move on to the second step, which says turn off all independent sources and find the transient response, right? The transient response, we're going to take that out. Checking this out, only left with this circuit on this side. We're going to do node analysis again, node v1 
and this is for our transient response we're going to have v1 divided by one then we're going to have a half dv1 divided by dt which is the current which goes down that capacitor then we're going to move on to this side where we are basically just going to have plus v1 subtract v2 divided by one which is the current that goes through there is equal to zero so all in all we have two v1 subtract v2 plus a half dv1 over dt is equal to zero then for node two node v2 we have v2 subtract v1 then we have one over three dv2 divided by dt is equal to zero so you can rearrange and actually substitute a few things so you can take this v1 to the other side of the equal sign which means v1 is equal to v2 plus one over three dv2 divided by dt substituting this to this formula over here we're going to have two multiply by v2 so this is where we have v1 we're going to, multiply, we're going to substitute that so we're going to have v2 plus one over three dv2 uh, dv2 over dt then we're going to close the bracket and say minus v2 plus so everything is now in terms of d uh, v2 so we're going to substitute that v1 again we're going to have v2 plus uh, 1 over 3 dv2 over dt is equal to 0. now multiplying through and yeah basically multiplying through we're going to have 2 v2 and that 2v2 is going to multiply, is going to subtract that, which means in the end we're just going to have v2. Then we're going to have 2 over 3 dv over dt, which is going to be added to this 1 over 2 dv over dt. So this is 3 over 6, this is 4 over 6, so the result will be 7 over 6 dv2 over dt. And we now move on to this part, which is the only thing that's left. So 1 over 2 multiplied by 1 over 3 is basically 1 over 6. And that 1 over 6, we also have d over dt multiplied by dv2 over it. So we're going to have d squared v2 divided by dt squared. And all of that is going to be equal to 0. We now write this. This is our characteristic equation for the response of v2. And we're now going to write it in terms of s, the s variable. So we're going to multiply through by 6 first, and we're going to have, let's take it up here. We're going to have, multiplying through by 6, we're going to have d squared v2. Now, putting this in decreasing powers of d over dt. So we're going to have that. Multiply through by 6. And then finally, you're going to have that. So now, Transforming, so let s equals to d, dv2 over dt, we're going to have s squared plus 7s plus 6 is equal to 0. Now finding the roots, you're going to find the roots to be s. So now find the roots, you can just basically use the formula negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And the roots we should you should find should be s1 is equal to minus 1 and s2 is equal to minus 6. So both these roots are really negative, which means we expect a um, overdamped response. And the general formula for an overdamped response looks something like this. It's a1 e to the s1, right? Negative s1 plus a2 e to the negative s2t. So this is the transient response of a general overdamped response, right? So we now have that with us, and we can take that into our total response. So for the total response, you just basically add the final value of V2. Now for steady state, finding the final value, this is gonna be an open circuit, that is gonna be an open circuit. So this whole circuit is basically just gonna be open, which means this is gonna be parallel to V1 and V2, which means the final values of V1 and V2 are both 20 volts. So now add that to our final response, we're gonna have 20. This is the final response of the total response of V2 of T. So we're gonna have 20 and that. So our job now is to find the coefficients A1 and A2 because S1 and S2 we just found now. Right. 
So that is our job. We're going to say v2 at time 0. We found that to be 0. So we're going to equate all of this to 0. Equate it to 0. Therefore, a1 is equal to the negative of 20 plus a2. Now, we're going to move on to dv2 divided by dt. And the value of that, let's see what we find for that value. So dv of a dv2, we found that to be 0 as well. So differentiating that, we're going to have negative a1, negative 6, a2 is equal to 0, which means a1 is equal to 2. So we can now substitute our initial, what's this? We can now substitute our initial equation, which was this, a1 is equal to negative 20 plus a2. So we're going to substitute it in here. The negatives are going to cancel out. So we're just going to have this. Then here, we're going to have negative 5a2 is equal to negative 20, which means a2 is equal to 4. Now that we have a2, we're going to substitute it back in here. It's 4, so we're going to have a1 is equal to negative 24. Now I have the coefficients, and we now have the total response of v2 of t, which is basically 20, and a1, which is a1, a1 is over here as negative 24, negative 24, e to the minus t, right? Then we have plus 4, which is a2 that we found here, e to the minus 6t, and that is in volts. Right? So now that we have v2, we can simply find v1 from this formula, which is over here, which we previously formulated. So we're just going to substitute v2 wherever we see it. And let me just create space by erasing this bottom part here. So I'm just going to erase this part so that we can transfer our v1. So transferring our v1, we're going to say v1. This is this is the formula for it. So v1 is equal to v2, which is this total response over here. So 20 subtract 24 e to the that and 4 e to the minus 6 t. Then we're going to add 1 over 3 of the derivative of this same v2. So plus 1 over 3, and then multiply by the derivative of v2, which is 24 e to the minus t. We're going to have minus 24 e to the minus 6 t. The multiplying through, we're going to have 8. We're going to have 8. That's going to be 8, 8. So saying 8, subtract that is negative 16 e to the minus t. And then 8, negative 4, subtract, um, 4 subtract. 8 is negative 4. So that is the value which you're going to have. Oh, this is the formula of our v1 of t. We now have v, the total response of v2 of t and v1 of t. So what do we do next? We now go back to our formula for vo. What did we say vo was? So we said vo, which is over here. We said vo is equal to v1 subtract v2. All that's left is to take this total response and subtract that total response. So V1, subtract V2 is equal to VO. So VO is equal to 20, subtract that. Subtract 4. And then it's going to subtract V2, which we found to be 20, subtract 24. as 4, e to the minus 60. So 20 subtract 20, that's 0, and then minus 16, and then so it's basically these are going to be positives to so 24, subtract um, 16, it's going to be 8. This is VO. Now we have, it's going to be negative, so minus 4, minus 4 is going to be negative 8. And that is your value for VO. You can simplify or transform this into just 8 e to the minus t, subtract e to the minus 6t in volt for time greater than 0.